who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and live? Go thou near, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, get you into your tents again. But as for thee, Stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts this morning that reading of His own precious truth. There are times... For all of us, when life doesn't go well, and maybe, just maybe, there's someone this morning in this congregation, life for you is not going well at all. Life for you is difficult. Life for you is hard. And maybe life for you at this minute is almost impossible to cope with. Maybe you've asked the question as I have asked the question hundreds of times. Why is life difficult? Why does life become hard? Where does it all go wrong? I wonder this morning if you ever asked yourself that question. Why is my life going nowhere? Why is my life the way it is? For mind you, when life's not going well, it leaves us all very weak and weary. But here's the question. Who do you blame this morning? Who do you blame for the fact that life isn't going hard? It, going well. Who do you blame this morning, child of God, that life's hard? Who do you blame? Do you know often times, child of God, and mark often times, not all times, but often times, often times when life's not going well, Often times when life's hard, often times when life is difficult, the only person to blame, now circle the word often times, 
Oftentimes, the only person to blame is ourselves. But that's true, child of God. When life's not going well, perhaps the reality of the whole scenario was this. There's nobody to blame, only ourselves, because oftentimes that's the case with me. When I struggle, when I find life not going well, oftentimes it's my fault, nobody else's. It's my fault. And you know, child of God this morning, maybe your personal life this morning is not going well at all. And maybe this morning God's message, God's message, is going to put the spotlight on the problem. Do you see, the Lord wants us this morning not to focus on our personal lives, but the Lord wants us this morning to focus on our spiritual lives because that's where the root of all problems come. Our spiritual lives. There's many things, child of God, in these personal lives of ours, that personal life of yours, that personal life of mine, there's so much that concerns us. And because there's so much that concerns us in these personal lives, we then ignore the importance of our spiritual life. When we ignore the importance of our spiritual lives, then the door begins to open up the problem. Here's a wee thought this morning, and it's this. When our spiritual life, again, I'm using the word oftentimes. I'm just giving you the message the Lord has given me for this, mess, this, this meeting this morning. Here's the wee thought. When our spiritual life, our spiritual life now, not our family life, not our social life, our spiritual life, when our spiritual life is not running right, it often overflows into our personal life. Child of God, let me ask you a wee question this morning. Well, more to the point, allow the Lord to ask yourself this question. How's your spiritual life? Never mind your personal life. Never mind your financial life. Never mind your social life. The question is, how's your spiritual life this morning? Your spiritual life. Because that's where we all struggle, at the spiritual life. And child of God this morning, you take this from me too often, too often, the flesh, the flesh dominates the spiritual. Too often. The personal life tries to dominate the spiritual life. You think of Abraham. You think of Moses. You think of Saul. You think of David. And oftentimes, child of God, these troubles come, and you know what it is? They're all of our own making. Abraham... He couldn't wait on God's promise, and look what problems he brought upon him, all his own making. You think of Moses. His problems were all of his own making. You think of Saul. You think of David. Let's pause. You think of you as I have thought of me. And it's all down to the fact this morning, child of God, 
that we often ignore the importance of our spiritual lives. You see, when you read through the book of Judges, you read through, yes, the book of Judges, you'll find the children of Israel. They were a nation that was like a yo-yo. One minute they were in a spiritual high, the next minute they were in a spiritual low. Why? Here's why. When they forsook the Word of God, when they forsook the commandments of God, things went wrong. But when they followed the Lord, and when they followed His commandments, and when they followed His statutes, then things went well. Listen to my text this morning. This is God's Word. Verse 33, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, that it may be well with you. You know, the thrust of this message this morning comes from these words, that it may be well with you. Notice, first of all, in verse 32, there's the order to be observant. Listen to what Moses told the people, or what the Lord said, ye, ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded. You know, first of all, there was the order to be observant so that it would be well for the children of Israel. You know, child of God, what Moses was saying here was this. Listen, you've got to take on board. You've got to take on heart all what the Lord says. Knowing God's Word is the need for every believer. Knowing God's Word is the need for every believer. Let me make one thing absolutely clear. You cannot substitute the Word of God for the Christian life. You can't do it. There's no substitution this morning for the Word of God concerning that spiritual life of yours and the spiritual life of mine. Listen to what is commanded. Ye shall observe. You see, child of God this morning, it's important that we know the Word of God. It's important that we know the Word of God. The better we know the Word of God, the better we know the God of the Word. Let me say this this morning, because this is what the Lord wants us to know. It should be the spiritual aim of every believer. No matter how old in the faith you are, or how young in the faith you are, it should be the spiritual aim of every believer to know God's Word. Because in knowing God's Word this morning, that's getting to know God's will for your life. God's will for your life, God's will for my life, God's will for all of our lives is found in the Word of God. Ye shall observe. I want you to know something else, child of God, this morning. The will of God for your life will never be found outside the Word of God. This is the way, God says. This is the way. This is my will for your life. My will for your life is in these pages. But that's the problem today. God's people today, I believe there's a lacking for an appetite for the Word of God. Ye shall observe. There's the order to be observant this morning. Do you know what that means? That means this morning, listen, we're to fill ourselves. We are to familiar, uh, familiar, uh, uh, familiarize ourselves with God's Word. 
I love what the Lord Jesus said in John 15, verse 17, because this backs it all up. The Lord Jesus says, If, if ye abide in me, and my words, listen to this bit, and my words abide in you. That's the secret. It's not just about us abiding in Christ, child of God. It's all about His Word this morning. His Word abiding in us. Why? Because if, my, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Do you see when we have the Word of God abiding in these hearts of ours and abiding in these minds of ours, and when we have the Word of God abiding in these lives of ours, then we'll pray. Not according to the flesh. Not according to our selfish needs. But according to the will of God. The order to be observant this morning is the first ingredient of the recipe that makes up a successful spiritual life. Listen to Job. Job 23, verse 12, he said, Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. You know, child of God, listen, it's God's word that satisfies the inner man. It's God's word that satisfies the inner man. And it's God's word it's God's Word that stabilizes the spirit you life. Let me repeat that. It's God's Word this morning that satisfies the inner man, the spiritual man. But it's God's Word this morning that stabilizes the spirit you life. There's no substitute this morning, no substitute whatsoever for the Word of God. Ye shall observe. Peter said in first chap sorry, first Peter two and two. Desire ye the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. It's the sincere milk of the word, not the semi skim milk of the word. Everything's semi skimmed now. Semi skim milk, semi skim butter, semi skim this. You shouldn't have semi skimmed water. Heaven semi skim now. But do you know there's men today and they're preaching the semi skim milk of the word and it's tripe? Preach the word as the word is. We're not to water it, we're not to dilute it. We're to desire the sincere milk of the word. Child of God, tell me this have you a desire for God's word this morning? Have you a desire for God's truth this morning? Have you a desire? Have I a desire? Listen, it's not George McConnell is asking these questions. It's God. Because maybe that's the root of your problem. Ye shall observe. I love the picture we have in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 1, where it says, And the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. The Lord Jesus says, Blessed are they that hear the word of God, aye, and keep it. Keep it where? Keep it within their heart. That's why for a lot of Christians, their spiritual life's going nowhere. No joy. No peace. No fire. No passion. You know, child of God, if the spiritual life's not right, the, the, the personal life won't be right. Ye shall observe why that it may be well with you. Secondly, verse 33. There's the order to be observant, verse 32. Take a wee look at verse 33 now, because there's the order to be obedient. Look what it says. It says, and verse 33, 
and ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you. There's one thing being observant of the Word of God, ah, but we need to be obedient to the Word of God. Why so many lives aren't going well today? Because we're not being obedient to the Word of God. Yes, we can preach it. We can study it. We can read it. But unless we apply this Word into our everyday living, it doesn't take effect. A student of C. H. Spurgeon, now come out of his college. He was one of the top graduates, and he met Mr. Spurgeon in his study one day. And Mr. Spurgeon was very impressed at his graduation. Mr. Spurgeon said this bright student, how can I really Live a dynamic spirit, you a life that will glorify God. Mr. Spurgeon just took a moment of quietness and looked at him. Do you love the Word of God? I do, Mr. Spurgeon. I honestly can tell you I do. Mr. Spurgeon never said another thing. The young fellow asked another question. He says, Mr. Spurgeon, I asked you that question. How can, my, how can I have my spiritual life that will be a, a life that will be ablaze for God and that it will affect people around me? Again, Mr. Spurgeon sat for a few moments of quietness, never answered a word. He says, do you love the Word of God? Mr. Spurgeon, I've told you, I do love the Word of God. And Spurgeon said, if you want to your spiritual life to take an effect on everyone around you and a life that will glorify God, you've got to do more than love it. You've got to live it. Live it. Live it. That's why so many of God's people are struggling. And that's why I struggle at times. It's one thing to learn it, but I'll tell you, it's another thing to live it. To live it. We must, child of God, and here's something I have to learn, never mind you. We have to allow the Word of God to have authority over our attitudes. We have to allow the Word of God to mold our minds. We have got to allow the Word of God to control our pathway. If we fail to do this, child of God, our spiritual life will be worthless and lifeless and, let me tell you, joyless. Joyless. Because the Bible says the Lord Jesus says, if you do whatsoever I command you, then my joy might remain in you, and your joy might be full. Is this where we're all struggling this morning? I can tell you now, friend, 
The Word of God may show you, the Word of God may teach you, the Word of God may place you and ask you to do something that's difficult, to do something that's against the grain. But when we walk according to the Word of God, and when we allow the Word of God to have authority over our attitudes, to mold our minds, to make our pathways... When we allow the Word of God to control our lives, then the Word of God, it's the Word of God when it's, when it's applied, places us in the place where God can bless us. Maybe that's why we don't have the blessing of God that we really long for. Because we fail to obey. His commandment. You want to know, I want to know how we ought to live each day. Listen, it takes more than reading the Scriptures. It takes for you, it takes for me to apply what's in the Scriptures into our lives. That's the order to be obedient. But look at the outcome to be obtained, that it may be well with you. Why do we live joyless, lifeless, spiritual lives this morning? Is it really because we do ignore God's truth? Is it truly, or is it true? that we ignore, ignore to apply God's truth to our lives. The children of Israel were commanded with these words, if you do what my commandments say, it will be well with you. And if you take a wee look at verse 32, it finishes with these words, ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. And that tells me there's no substitute for the child of God. apart from the Word of God. The old hymn writer got, got it right, didn't he? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Joshua was told this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. These things, Jesus says, have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Mr. Spurgeon, how can I live a spiritual life that will glorify God and make an impression on those around me? Do you love God's Word? Yes, I do. Then live it. Live it. So many lives go to pieces. because they fail to live out in their lives the ways in which God instructs us to live. Let us observe. Let us obey that it may go well with you. That it may go well with me. There's no other way but to trust and obey. May God bless His Word.
to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn is 671. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory.